my name is Timo Galdmes. Um, I am married to Tam. We have two beautiful teenage daughters, uh, Emma and Hannah. We've been living in Mauritius for um, over 14 years now. Yeah, I just love spending time with friends. Uh, we are a very social family. Obviously, having been here for a long time, we um, got to know a lot of people. We, we pretty integrated into the community and um, and love having a bra. Love socializing with, with friends and just love being being with people and, and uh, living life really. So from my surname Heldenace, you can tell that um, I'm not from a British origin. So I'm very much an Afrikaans background, although I grew up in Natal. So um, we, we grew up in an English community. My father was a part of the Ingia Kerk, which was, uh, you know, back in those days, pretty rigid and, and, and pretty uh, set in their ways. And um, and I grew up in the Ingia Kerk. So being religion and and uh, Christianity as such has been part of my life since since I can remember. You know, we used to go to church and and then when church finished, we had to sit through the whole church service. And when church finished, we then had to go to Sunday school for another 40 minutes while the, the parents had taken tea and coffee, which I thought was terribly unfair. Yeah, and then that evolved. I went to high school um, with, with, I think, a, a knowledge that, that Jesus was there. But it was a, a forced thing. It wasn't necessarily something that I chose. I wouldn't say I was a committed Christian. I wouldn't say it was something that that I'd given much thought to. It was really just a process. And then when I was at high school, I was the youngest of four kids. My um, my dad was quite a quite a tough guy, and uh, right was right and wrong was wrong, and he felt wrong by the Enchia camp for some reason. I still to this day don't know what went down, but he stopped going to church, and my mom. I started going to the Methodist church in, in Mshlali where we lived and um, and then on weekends when I went with her I, I started going to the church with her every now and then and it was the first time I think that sort of a realization came that that it was more of a choice than a um, than, than an obligation and yeah and then after school drifted off and did various things and um, or didn't go to church at all. Well, Tam and I met in 1995, around about there. Just before we were married in 1998, 1999, some of our friends were going to, to church in Durban and uh, we went to the Alpha course. I think that's the first time where both of us made a, a conscious decision that we wanted to follow God and, and we gave our lives to the Lord. Yeah, and then um, Em was born. We moved to Mauritius in 2005 and joined Black River Church at that stage, which is now Redeemer. And we were jeepers in those days. There were less than 10 of us in that church. You know, it was really right in its infancy. Yeah, my, my walk has been, I would say all, all the way through, has been a reluctant walk. It's, I've been pulled in probably more often than not, almost against my will. Um, and it shows you how, how strong God is pulling has been on my life because I've I've resisted to a degree. I've, I've been very low to, to accept leadership roles. I would say the last few years that's changed a lot. And as God has impacted more on my life, I, I, I've come to accept that more. We got baptized while we were over here as well. Um, Tam and I, you know, made that decision consciously. And, and I think that for me was the excuse the the pun but it was the watershed moment you know it was it was really in my life it was like that's when I when I made a very committed decision that that there was a path I wanted to follow and the path was was Jesus I wouldn't say it, it, like a specific defining moment or a specific thing I think for me one of the one of the difficulties I've always had, and, and it's it's something I still struggle to agree with to this day, are the big questions. You know, when you when I, I, I tend to overanalyze these things, and and when when you try and rationalize it, and when you try and and make sense of it all, which which I know you can't. But, you know, once you understand who God is and and that He's all powerful, you're never going to understand all His ways and and, and all His. Uh, um, his plans for your life and his, you know, how he does things. It's just, but inherently in me, it's always been a problem. It's it's something that that I've really struggled with. Is like when I lie in bed at night and I and I ask the big question. It's like, but it just doesn't make sense, you know. And um, and I think that Alpha course for me was a was the first time where it helped me put aside the big stuff. It was a point where it was like, you know, what at some point, at some point, you just got to have faith and you you've got to believe and and God is all-knowing and I'm not. 
I think it was a definitive choice that I had to make. And and I won't say after that, I've never had a big question again. I, I think we, we, we human and, and we have these things, but it gave me the, the peace and the, the comfort to know that I didn't have to have all the answers. I don't have a, a necessarily a before and after, you know, it's been a, a migration almost, you know, in, in, the, in the sense that I always knew God had a calling on my life. I always knew God was real. Before the Alpha course, even though I knew, I consciously rejected it. And I lived life like, like a 18, 19, 20 year old lives a life in a big city. You know, there was um, a lot of stuff around drinking, partying, stuff like that which you know which i didn't give a second thought to it, it was just the way we lived and and i mean tam and i you know tam and i lived together before we were married you know things like that which which was it was just the way everyone did things and and i didn't give it a second thought i, I never went to bed at night feeling guilty and i shouldn't be doing this it, it was i sort of pushed god aside and and i was living life irrespective of god after then after that alpha course you know, it was, a, it was a gentle migration in my life where systematically, um, as, I, as I got to know more, as I developed a relationship with God, I started pushing those things away, you know, and not to say that I don't enjoy having a beer anymore, but I, I, it's all, everything within moderation, um, the, the way I speak, the language I use, the, the way I am around my friends. I try and live my faith, you know, I try and, be an example through the way I live, what I stand for. Um, I'm not scared to express my faith. All my friends know what I believe in and um, that I'm a Christian and that I, you know, and we have endless debates and a lot of my friends, especially our Mauritius, are not Christian. And then most importantly, I think, is the example that, that we set to our kids, you know, that, that they've been raised in a, in a home where it's very, very clear what we believe and, and what we stand for. I still slip up, I think we all do, and we, we have our bad moments and uh, get irate on the road and I say things I shouldn't say. And um, But it's it's being conscious of when you know you're doing things wrong and, and, and repenting and doing better, you know, and, and trying, to, trying to do things that God would be proud of. I think, I think the biggest influence initially was my mom um, and she still is. She's a incredible um, woman of God. She, her faith is just, she's been through some incredible tough times, you know, and, um, and her faith is, <laughs> she, she's beaten cancer twice. Uh, they went through uh, a bankruptcy. Um, she, she nursed my dad through seven years of illness. Um, where things were really tough, they lost their house, they, you know, things were just not easy for them. She's just, just the most incredible Christian. She always sees the positive. As a role model, she's just been incredible. And she, she just, she prays for all of us constantly, you know, and every day she sends a scripture, every day she sends a, a thought for the day. She's, um, yeah, she's, she's, she's just a, a beautiful Christian. Uh, to the point where, you know, we, she really, I think with my dad, before he passed away, um, I think he got to a point where he accepted God as well. And we prayed with him. And um, and I think that's largely due to to the work my mom did and, and the, self, the absolute selfless way that she, she did it. You know, and then um, within our family, Tam's sister and her husband are in full-time ministry. And I, I look how they live by faith. I just see goodness in them. Know, and and how, how they live their lives and, and what they do in their community. And then obviously Tam is at all another level and, and she's just incredible in the way that she, um, you know, she lives out her faith and, and her Christianity. If, if I had to describe myself, first and foremost, I'm a people's person. Dealing with people and interacting with people, making people feel comfortable, be part of the welcoming crew and the hospitality crew. And people know that, that that I believe in Jesus and that, that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a committed Christian and, and that I stand up for that and I'm not scared to do that. And all of those characteristics and traits that I have that God has given me amplifies that. You've, 
you've got absolutely nothing to lose. You now you've got by by accepting God into your life and accepting Jesus into your life and walking this earth with the Holy Spirit next to you. What have you got to lose? You've got so much to gain. You've got eternity to gain. I don't see any downside. You know, most Christians are, are just normal people. Obviously, there are changes you have to make in your life, but but it's a gradual thing. As I explained earlier, it's a, it's a gradual thing. God is so forgiving and He's so patient, you know, and He forgives. And that's the reason I've got, in my, I've got uh, one of the reasons I've got Jesus in my life is I am a sinner and I make mistakes all the time, but I know that He forgives me. The thing that always hits home for me is, is how a father loves his son or how a parent loves their child is no matter what my kids do i can get so irate with them in, a, in, a, in, a, in an instant and which is not a great trait i know but uh, i can but you know what half an hour later i love them i always love them but half an hour later i've forgiven them and and that's how god is and that's how jesus is and would it not be awesome to have someone like that in your life who can see through your faults through your mistakes accept you for who you are and, and, and just to walk beside you. So I, I just don't see why you wouldn't. From a very personal perspective, I was on the verge of, of buying a business, you know, and, and again, you look at it, how God has his hands on your life. Um, if this thing had happened two months later, I would have basically invested my life savings into a business, had overheads. And, and everything that comes with having a business. Although my future is uncertain from a from a, a job perspective, because I, I work in an industry where um, we're very reliant on on international trade and and, and business, um, it could have been so much worse because I could have not had a job and not had a income. Could have been in a position where I spent all my life savings and had the responsibility of paying other people's salaries. So, you know. God knows what is best. Uh, I firmly believe that, that God is, has his hand on each one of our lives. Sam and I often chat about it and I've, 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 I'm totally at peace with how this thing's going to turn out. It's, it's, we, can, we can use our tools that God's given us and obviously put ourselves in the best position to look after ourselves and our families. But ultimately, God is in control and he'll do what's best for you. But yeah, my advice would be just to be patient and, and look up, you know, and... and because he's, he's got his hands on me.